All right, what is going on financial movers? Today I'm going to be talking about General Motors Company, ticker symbol GM. They closed yesterday at $54.88, down 2.1%. And today in pre-market, now they're down to $54, down 1.58% in pre-market, okay? Now the company did report some pretty solid earnings over at GM. They reported an EPS beat by 29 cents and beat on revenue. Revenue. So I'm going to try to dissect why this company is down and then I'm going to give you some key levels at the end of this video on the technical charts of where I think that GM could go and where it could be some solid levels to pick it up if their fundamentals hold up well over at GM. Now before I do all of that, I'm going to ask you to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button for me so you never miss out on another analysis and let's go. So GM right now has a market cap of 78.5 billion dollars and it's no secret the company is trying to get their EV game up to another level so they're trying to put out 30 new EVs by 2025 globally with two-thirds of those being available in North America they're going to have uh, Hummer EVs they're going to have their Cadillac EVs some cheaper bolt options on the Chevy brand so with that bullish news and the bullish earnings that they just put out yesterday why is the stock dropping well there is a problem with the semiconductors and there's a shortage right now specifically in the automobile industry and so General Motors is is running into a semiconductor shortage, which means that they won't be able to get the semiconductors for the production that they need over there. So that is a problem. You know, less semiconductors, less production will mean a decrease in the revenues for the next quarter and maybe a couple more quarters going in. So I believe the semiconductor problem and then the EVs is a typical battle of bulls and bears over at GM. And that's what's causing the stock to kind of fluctuate in the middle here doesn't know if it wants to go up or down the bulls and bears are in a war right now so Get into their income statement information. They have the year ended for 2020 and then the year ended for 2019. So we're going to compare those year over year. And starting with their net sales and revenue, they have their total net sales and revenue between automotive and their GM financial coming in at $122.4 billion, which is down from 2019 at from $137 billion. So you mix those drop in revenues with the short shortage in the semiconductors and you got yourself a bearish scenario over at GM and with investors. Now looking at their cost and expenses, they got total cost and expenses coming in at $115.8 billion, which is down from $131.7 billion. That is good to see. The company was able to cut some cost, manage those. So drop in revenues, drop in cost. That's good management. And then total operating income income, this is impressive, came in at $6.6 .6 billion, which is up from 2019 at $5.4 billion. So the company was really able to control the costs and expenses to increase that operating income with less revenue. That, that's a sign of good management to me over at GM. Now they got their net incomes coming in at $6.3 billion, which is lower from 2019 at $6.6 .6 billion. Looks like they had some more interest in tax and whatnot going on over there. Their income before taxes were actually up in 2020 compared to 2019, so they're paying a little bit more there. But you know, overall, pretty solid management, these costs and expenses being cut on lower revenues. But in the upcoming quarters with less production because of semiconductors, this does present a bearish case at GM. Now getting down to their balance sheet, their balance sheet doesn't look too bad. They got their assets up at the top. Let's run through those. So they got total current assets, cash and cash equivalents with the marketable debt securities. So that is basically everything that they could liquidate right now or is liquidated in hand, cash in hand. That comes in to about $30 billion right there looking strong, which is up from 2019 at only 25 billion dollars so looking all right there 
Total current assets coming in at $80.9 billion, which they were able to get that up from $74.9 billion in 2019. And then total assets coming in at $235 billion whenever you count for all their property, equipment, everything like that. That's a lot of money in their total assets up a little bit from $228 billion in 2019. Now getting down to their liabilities and their equity, the company did cut down on their total current liabilities down to $79.9 billion from $84.9 billion. So that looks pretty pretty good that they were able to cut some of that down. So total current assets at $80.9 billion, total current liabilities at $79.9 billion. It looks all right. I'm gonna say it looks great. But it doesn't look bad. It looks okay. Not so bad. I mean, it's coming out pretty equal right there. Now, getting down more into their non-current liabilities, their longer-term stuff, they did add to long-term debt. So they're sitting at $16.1 billion on the automotive long-term debt, which is an increase from $12.4 billion, bringing total liabilities up to $185.5 billion, up from $182.5 point zero billion dollars in 2019 so total assets 235.1 billion total liabilities at 185.5 billion it looks all right I mean, it doesn't look bad over at gm they definitely got more on this balance sheet than in, in assets than they do liabilities and they got a lot of just liquidable cash and securities at 30 billion dollars to hold them over in the short term so i think it looks fine so if you're bullish on gm with their ev V's that they got coming out, regardless of the semiconductor problems right now, then this isn't looking like a terrible company to be invested in going into the future to get a foothold in the EV industry. Now, the company just made a double top on the technical chart. So they made a massive run from January of last month from all the way at $39 going up to $56, $57 a run of over 40%. And then decreased from that 57 mark all the way down to 48, which found support, but it was a drop in 14%. It bounced off there and then hit again up at that 57 mark. And that's looking like clear resistance. And this looks like a double top, which is a bearish pattern, okay? A double top is exactly whenever stock makes a bullish run up, makes a first peak, falls, finds support, and then makes a second peak and starts to fall again. Now, the stock could find a base and create a double bottom. We will see if that happens. So do I want to buy GM right now at $54? No. Okay, I do think it needs to fall down to some more support after making this second top. I'm going to put a 20 day, a 50 day, a 100 and a 200 day moving average on the GM stock chart. So yesterday, the stock fell all the way down to $52 right at the 20-day moving average, and then it got support. I honestly think there was a lot of algorithm buying up, and then, I mean, the volume, the nasty sell volume in the stock doesn't look bullish to me. So I'm going to let this stock probably fall down to about another 10%, 9% down to $48 where it found support the first time in January after hitting that 57 mark, okay? So that's where I would like to pick GM up for the first time. It correlates well with the 50-day moving average at $47.83. And if it falls through that a little bit more, I think it has next support at $45, or let's say $45, where the stock was finding resistance back in November of 2020 and then started to gap up over. It. So let's see if that resistance could turn into next support level and correlate well with a 100-day moving average, I imagine, by the time that it would get down there. So if you got anything out of this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button for me, and see you all next video, financial movers.